as ready as we'll ever be to talk about shows. Ready to talk about shows. You guys, I can't watch Netflix tonight. I gotta get ready to do my show. Robbie's tips for artists because he loves you. Hola, you amazing artists. So you're about to do your first art show and you are freaking out. We've done one billion one art shows. One billion art shows. And we have a few tips for you on how to be prepared for your art show. You can use our previous suffering and failures to learn and have a better experience. The reason I'm thinking about this is because recently I was the featured artist for Gallery Night Downtown Pensacola. Yeah! I think, I'm pretty sure I stole the sign. So although I've done over I, I don't even know how many hundreds of shows. When I was asked to be the featured artist and show my work, I panicked. It's been over a year since I've actually been doing shows because I've been so busy here in the studio. But yeah, there's no reason to panic. I mean, it is a big deal. It's a big deal to get out there and show your work, but the show itself and being ready for a show, that's really not a big deal. So you've got nothing to stress out about. The thing about it is that when you're getting ready to do a show, I'm sure that you're worried because you want everything to be like, perfect. The truth of the matter is that anybody that has been doing these shows for a while, they have things that they implement, but it's never perfect. There's all kinds of things and factors that play into it. Like you've got weather and placement of your booth, terrain, wind speed, proximity to garbage cans, proximity to garbage cans. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not a good one. These are all things that you have to keep in mind when you're putting your show together. You really got to be flexible. And that, that brings us to number one, be flexible with your setup. I like things to be very simple, set up in a way where I can actually move things and form them to however it is that I want, depending on what the space is, depending on which direction the wind is coming from, depending on whether or not the sun is bleaching out our booth. I like to be very rigid with my setup and then get angry when it doesn't work out in my favor. <coughs> yeah. That's my strategy. I'm about 50-50 for that working out. The thing about it is that when you're setting up for a show, most of the time you have maybe about half an hour to an hour of, of setup time. And a lot of the times it is hot as balls outside when you're setting up during that time. So you don't want to be rushing around trying to fit into like this rigid structure that you've built and sweating your butt off. It's kind of miraculous how the temperature just goes up 20 degrees when you start to unpack your art. There was one show that I was doing that while we were setting up, there was a fountain that was across from us. And I remember constantly looking at that fountain, dripping in sweat, thinking to myself, like, if I just jump in there and like strip my clothes off, I don't know how that would look, naked artist inside a fountain in the middle of a show. From the pieces that you take out to your show, have at least a couple show stoppers. A minimum of two pieces that you are super excited about. That's what works for me. Being an introvert, if I take out a piece that I'm really, really excited about, then I can't help but talk about it, no matter how introverted I might be feeling at that moment in time. The other reason that you want to bring out some show stoppers is that people will start to like cow herd past your booth. It will definitely cause people to leave the how heard line and maybe go into your booth where they just pass by like could i can i have a business card i'm gonna Please. try to come back i swear <laughs> Be comfortable, but don't look like a slob. Clee always seems to look amazing whenever we do these shows. No matter how hot it is outside, she always looks great, which I think makes up for me. I have a very hobo chic style. That's 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 just who I am. But also don't dress like a day at the beach for your outdoor show. Yeah. I've walked past some booths where the artists are sitting there in a pair of shorts with no shirt on. And they're like, hey, what's up, man? You want some of this? Chest hair just like sticking to everything because it's all sweaty and gross. <laughs> Like, don't glistening all over their balls. <laughs> Stand to the occasion. One of the things that I know a lot of artists that already do shows are going to argue with is the fact that I believe that you should stand up for at least the majority of your show. There's something that is just not pleasing to me. Whenever I go to a show and walk into a booth and the artist seems to be sitting and like I picture myself in that situation where like I walk into a place and I might be interested in a work of art but nobody's actually gone up to greet me. You know, just greet them. You don't have to like hover over them and be like so what are you looking at now don't bitch and whine about the show in fact don't bitch and whine about anything while you're out doing a show i can't tell you how many 
very, very prestigious art festivals I've been to where I will walk into the booth and there will be two artists standing there complaining about the show or complaining about the patrons that are walking the show saying nobody's buying anything. There are a bunch of... A bunch of Lucky Lucy's out today. <laughs> Man, really, if you are bitching and moaning that nobody's buying anything from you, I guarantee you that the reason nobody's buying anything from you is because you are bitching and moaning. Don't hide behind your booth. I've seen people sitting at shows, sitting behind their booth, reading a book, not paying any attention whatsoever to what's going on in their booth. It's like, come on, man, you're there to talk about your art. And nothing says, I don't care about you <laughs> more than hiding behind your booth. Engage with people and talk to them. This is one of those things that a lot of introverts would be like, ah! I can't do this. I am an introvert, please an introvert. And like I said before, if you have things that you are excited about, it will be easier for you to talk to people about those things. When they come into the booth, I recommend that you say hi or hello or something like that, and then just leave them be. Don't try to sell your work to them. Be there to answer any questions that they might have about the work. I've run across some artists that they come in, they're like, today only I'm selling these pieces for $20. You wanna buy them? $20. What does that say about you and what does that say about your work just be polite to people just have conversations with people people are awesome if they love your work they're gonna want it they're gonna want to know more about it kick your friends out if they linger for too long we have a lot of friends that are artists so they tend not to linger i know that there have been situations where like people will walk into a booth and they're there and they're really excited to see me and i'm excited to see them but then they'll talk to me and like if i move my glance that way they will move in front of my glance we can hang out any other time so when it comes down to it if you need to kick somebody out be like hey man i'm i'm kind of busy right now we'll hang out later i recommend that you do that Actually, this topic brings to mind another equally important measure of preparedness that everyone needs to know for shows. And it's what I like to call the lingering weirdo avoidance strategy, or LWAS, if you will. This has happened to us. If you're going to do art shows, you're going to encounter the lingering weirdo. If you have someone with you, you can actually set up a code word for your friends. You can also employ the Rafi tactic. Yeah, I basically just walk away from them mid-sentence and then let Klee deal with it. So one tactic that I like to use is to insert a conversation exeter. All right, man, will you have a good day? Or, excuse me, I have to take a look at this over here. I, a lot of times I feel like they'll take the hint. There's only been one time where I had to walk up to somebody and say, hey, you need to go right now. Lingering weirdo avoidance strategy. Whether you have a friend with you or you're handling the weirdo on your own, have a plan in place. Yeah, have a plan. It'll save you in the long run. <laughs> Don't leave your booth. I, uh, I'm actually terrible at number 10. I I tend to get distracted and I just kind of leave my booth and then walk around and go talk to other artists. Where's yeah. Rafi? I don't know. You can't really talk about your art if you're not there to talk about it. Bring plenty of water, gum, mints, snacks, something for your breath. Number 12, don't block your entrance. A lot of times when I'm doing a show, I'll notice like people will meet each other like, oh, hey, Bill, it's been so long since I've seen you. And then they'll engage in this full on conversation right in front of the entrance to your booth, not realizing that they're blocking the way for people to walk in. Keep in mind whenever you're talking to somebody that you're not blocking the entrance to your booth. Number 13, keep an eye on your money. I hate saying this because this should be common sense, but always keep an eye on your money. Have a show purse or you know a nifty uh what are those things called that you put around your waist have a show fanny pack oh the fanny pack the fanny pack is actually coming back into style no so. no we're keep in mind transporting your goods instead of transporting your paintings or your pieces piecemeal you want to make sure that you have them in bundles so for example with me i have mine in big bins where i could carry about 25 paintings at a time so always have something like collapsible dollies or or just an easy way to be able to transport all your things. Number 15, art walls. You need them. 
they look so much better than if you have them just laying out on a table or propped up on the ground. A lot of artists that I know, they use like lattice work, they use uh, dividers like room dividers, or they buy professional walls and, and use those. Now I like building my own walls. If you guys want to see how I do that and what are the materials that I use and how I build my walls, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do a separate video for that. Number 16, have plenty of art at the show. Make sure that you bring out plenty of pieces. Don't stress out about bringing up enough pieces for the show whatever you bring out will be fine but if you can have some extra pieces that you can replace other pieces with number 17 if you're gonna get a canopy which for most of these shows you need a canopy get a white canopy a lot of shows will not allow you to have any other color canopy they want to have the same canopies throughout the show number 18 use fold up tables now i think that you should have fold up everything from fold up tables to fold up chairs you have fold up canopy fold up easels walls that are able to fold up i feel like everything should be able to be made smaller so you could fit more stuff into your vehicle rafi's like why can't we just get a shrink range isn't that a great idea so you set up your booth you shrink it it's already set up you hit it with the growing ray and then it grows and it's already set up. Seconds, it would take seconds, it's brilliant. It's a magnificent idea. If any of you out there have patents on a shrink ray and a regrowing ray, please let me know, us. let me know. Number 19, have a variety of price ranges. I always try to cover price ranges all across the board from my big expensive showstopper pieces to like smaller pieces that maybe sell in the price range of anywhere between $25 to $35. Try to have things that are across the board in prices but always be fair to yourself. Don't undersell your work either. Number 20, have business cards and other things. Bookmarks, stickers, just fun items that people could take that have your name on them. Have business cards and keep in mind that these business cards are meant for you to give away. I know a lot of artists who like get 500 business cards and they're like, oh, are you sure? Am I gonna give this to you? Because this costs me money. Give out as many business cards as you possibly can. I order my business cards from Got Print because they have a really good price on a thousand at a time. Think of doing a demonstration. It's definitely not necessary because you're gonna be busy as it is, but if it's a slow show, it might be fun to get out there and do some outdoor painting. Keep an eye on the weather. Uh, keep an eye on the percentage of rain, but most importantly, keep an eye on the wind speed. Also, make sure that you have stuff to tie down and weigh down your booth when you go out to these shows. I've seen booths just like fly across. Utter decimation. Because people didn't like tie them down. Have a bag of goodies. Zip ties, bungee cords, stakes, weights, curtain hooks, aluminum fence wire, rope. Plenty of rope. Those are some of the things I recommend that are in there and you add as you experience more and more shows. What I consider the most important one is stay positive. Don't be all stay positive, have fun. If you get a lingering weirdo, is it a lingering weirdo or a lingering creepy weirdo? Lingering, no, 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 no. You can't lengthen the anacronym. It's LWAS. Elwas. Lingering weirdo avoidance strategy. Elwas. And that's all I got. I know that there's probably more things and if there's stuff that you could think of for the show just leave them in the comments below and let me know what your show experience has been. Especially if you guys are doing your first show I'm really interested in hearing how that experience went for you so let me know. And I really hope you guys found this helpful and if you did please leave us a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. If you want to watch more videos like this just click uh, over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.